Hi guys, Olive here, here today to discuss the reading I did in August and September 2023. As I mentioned in my TBR video for the month of October, the past few months have demanded a lot for me. Between new things going on in my life and sick cats and commitments here and there and everywhere, I just wasn't doing much reading, which is kind of unusual for me. So instead of doing tiny wrap-up videos for each of the past two months, I figured I would just wait and then make a combined wrap-up video in which I talk about all the reading I did in both August and September. But just like usual, I will start off by discussing fiction. And this first one, I am so glad I picked this up after years of being curious about it. It's called Crescent by Diana Abu Jaber. And this is a novel about an Iraqi American chef living and working in Los Angeles, who begins a really intense love affair with a professor who had been exiled from Iraq. And I don't really know what else to say about the plot other than that, because there are other things that happen in this novel. But this is a book that is so much more invested in its characters. It's interested in creating a thick sense of atmosphere, much more than creating a complex story. Usually that kind of thing would bother me. I like plot. I mean, how many times have you heard me come on a wrap up video and gripe about a novel that doesn't have enough of it? Nothing's happening. Where's the plot? Not so in this book. This one is so successful at creating this mysterious, dreamily romantic haze that kind of settles on top of the events of this novel. And then there's a hint of danger in there as well. Like, you know, the other shoe is going to drop and you're almost excited for it to happen. You know how beekeepers use smoke to calm bees down and kind of put them in a light trance? I felt like one of those bees reading this book. Now, would I have taken a little bit more story from this one? Of course I would have. But the way this book made me feel while I was reading it more than made up for the fact that there just wasn't a whole lot going on. So I ultimately gave this one four stars. It's just a great read for a hot summer day. One that I DNF'd though was a book that I thought I was going to adore. It's called The History of Living Forever by Jake Wolf. This is a novel about a high school student who is devastated when he learns that his chemistry teacher, with whom he was actually having a romantic relationship, died from an overdose. And then this student finds out that his teacher was actually on this lifelong quest to perfect the recipe for the elixir of everlasting life. And then we get flashback scenes to this teacher's younger years when all of that started for him. The opening to this book was really interesting. I mean, there is the whole teacher student thing, which I did find off putting, and it is handled very casually in this book. So if you're horrified by that, there's nothing in here that's going to make you feel better about it. But then as we went along, it just didn't feel like there was any forward momentum with the plot. There was plenty of plot in here. There were plenty of seeds planted, but it doesn't feel like we really went anywhere with it. So I didn't hate this book. It didn't make me angry. That's not the reason I put it down. I just wasn't feeling the pull to come back to it. It was actually starting to feel like a chore. And I really don't want to feel that about a book I'm reading. So I put it down. But I did see on Goodreads reviews that the final 50 pages or so actually get really Really good. So there is a slim chance I might come back to this someday. The last novel that I read during that window of time was The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane, the classic work of historical fiction set during the American Civil War, in which a young boy goes off to fight in that war with very romantic ideas about the hero he's about to become, only to be met with the very harsh realities of how horrible war truly is. I know when I was a student studying the Civil War, I know I must have read sections from this novel, but if we did, I don't remember them. And certainly at such a young age, I would not have been able to appreciate the gorgeous, heartbreaking writing in this one and the psychological ride it took me on when reading it as an adult. I'm actually very grateful to my Wishbone series for encouraging me to pick this one up as an adult. If you missed the video in which I discuss the Wishbone adaptation of this book, I will link that for you in the description box below and up in the cards. They did a really great job with this one. I also read a poetry collection called What Kind of Woman by Kate Bear, which contains poems about women's experiences, including including many on being a wife and a mother and what those labels do to your identity as a woman. 
there are many beautiful poems in here, but I'm just still not convinced that I'm a poetry person. I remain open to changing my mind. Maybe I just haven't found the right collection yet because I appreciated this, but I wasn't able to get lost in it. And I also have to say that it made me very tired on behalf of the author because raising children sounds well and truly exhausting. I do not know how you moms out there do it. But now on to the good stuff. And by good stuff, I mean all the nonfiction books I've read over the past two months. Apologies to you fiction lovers out there. But until novels start delivering for me this year, I'm going to refer to nonfiction as the good stuff. But... Over the past couple of months, I have only read one book off of my 23 nonfiction books to read in 2023 list. Really not good. I have a lot of catching up to do. But the one I did read is called The Horde by Marie Favreau. This is a history of the Mongol Horde or the Western section of the Mongol Empire that was actually set up by those loyal to one of Genghis Khan's sons who had been stripped of his rights to the traditional throne. And this is a history of how the Mongol Horde came to be, all of the political and economic happenings. But the author also discusses what she calls the Mongol exchange or all of the trade and cultural happenings that were going on within the larger empire, which was actually a very, very sophisticated empire. Sure, it could be brutal at times, but it was surprisingly tolerant at other times. We could have actually a lot to learn from them. And this is just such a thorough, fascinating account. Sure, the author is a little bit stiff at times, but she clearly has a command over the subject matter. But after reading Crescent, which I discussed at the beginning of this video, I was craving more food writing. So I picked up a book called National Dish by Anya von Bremsen, which is a very unique nonfiction book in which this author discusses traveling to various countries in order to research dishes that represent their country's national cuisine. And then throughout the entire book, she's having this ongoing discussion about food as identity in a now very globalized world. I think if you liked Stanley Tucci's show, Searching for Italy, then you will really enjoy this book because it's got that same combination of food and travel, but also history, culture, and then the host or the author's personal involvement in the research process. I learned a ton from this book. I have to say I especially appreciated the conversation about food myths during the Italy chapter, speaking of Italy. But I did walk away from this book feeling like it was just a little bit too much. I feel like if this author would have focused on maybe just one region or if she had cut out a few chapters, then I would have felt less bombarded, I guess is the word. I just felt like there was so much information. We're talking about so many different places. It felt like it was hard to commit one to memory before moving on to the next. Reading this book kind of felt like eating a mystery stew in which everyone has kind of dumped in their own contribution like they do in that festival in Stardew Valley. Like there are so many flavors going on in here. I don't even know what I'm tasting anymore. So I think her first book was a lot more successful. But next at my library, when What an Owl Knows by Jennifer Ackerman became available, I decided to just go ahead and read it, even though it was not on any of my TBRs, because, well, she's Jennifer Ackerman and I love her bird books. This is obviously a book all about owls, different species of owls and their varying capabilities, just how incredible they are. But it's also about their relationship with us humans and how people are trying to get the word out about how important owls are, how amazing they are, because some cultures do view them as bad omens and therefore don't mind harming them. Jennifer Ackerman always does a great job in her books at making you as the reader feel just as astonished as she is by the incredible capabilities of these creatures. There is always so much wonder and so much respect in her books. And this is another great one from her. If you are interested in owls, this is definitely one you're going to want to read. And if you are interested in owls, a while back, I actually made a video in which I reviewed two other books on owls. And I bring that up because one of those two books, Jennifer Ackerman actually references in this new book. So if you're interested in watching that, I will link it for you in the description box and up in the cards. And then speaking of my two books on series of videos, my latest addition to that series focused on two books 
on Turtles. Dreaming in Turtle by Peter Lawfer is a rather harrowing breakdown of all the ways that turtles are threatened by humans in our modern world. But then on the flip side of that coin is Of Time and Turtles by Cy Montgomery, a part memoir, part natural history book about a period of time that the author of The Soul of an Octopus spent helping out at a turtle rescue in New England. These two books together ended up being the perfect representation of the think globally, act locally phrase. And they both will make you appreciate all things turtle. If you would like to hear me discuss both of these books in detail while wearing a turtle shirt, I will link that video for you in the description box below and up in the cards. But those were all the books that closed out my summer. Like I said, there weren't very many by my standards anyway, but I did what I could with everything going on. Very much looking forward to getting back on track now. But all of the books I did discuss today, as well as any videos I may have mentioned throughout this video, I will link all of those for you in the description box below. They will all be there for your clicking convenience. And at the very bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to all the places you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, Instagram, The Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active in case you want to keep up with what I'm reading and what I'm doing right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.